made a hell of a lot of sense to me. So I started to study myself. I found most people don't know who they are. They really don't. Now, if you've clicked on this video, most likely you are a person. And as soon as you are born, many things have been thrust upon you to tell you who you are. Your name, your family, your race, your school, your skills, your mistakes, your job, your haircut, your likes, your dislikes, your wins, your losses, your wife, your money, your car, your house, your dog, all of it. But is any of this even you? Do you ever have this odd, uncomfortable feeling in your life that it's all just a load of bollocks? And that this life story that we've been told just isn't even true of who we actually are? Well, that's because this is you. And all of this shit, this is part of your ego. And if you stay with me, I'll explain why. Now, the other day, me and my mate, we recorded an episode of our podcast with a monk, like an actual monk, like an orange robe bald head and everything monk. I personally wanted to ask the monk about ego because in my head, what ego meant was this big, grandiose, self-inflated image of who we think we are and what we're capable of. And as I've been committing more to achieving goals in my sport and other areas of my life, I've been asking myself an important question. And that is, how do I build unwavering self-confidence in my ability to perform without developing a big ego? Because no one likes that guy, right? Well, the monk said to me that ego isn't actually about arrogance or believing that you are better than anybody else. Ego is simply about attachment to anything worldly, i.e. attaching all of the shit that was thrust upon you from birth and believing that that is who you are. But by this definition, right, everybody has a pretty big ego because everyone is attached to the worldly things in their life. And I think now that this is true. So now the rest of this video is why I think if you don't know about your ego, it could ruin your life, to use a cliche phrase. And you, like me, might not want it to. Right, let's get all nerdy for a moment and talk some psychology. Last summer, I read this book and it slapped me in the face with how profound it was because the author, Ernest Becker, talked about the human condition in a completely different way than I'd ever heard before. He basically argued that we are born into a world that we didn't choose as a finite creature in a completely infinite universe. The reality of our situation is that we don't, as individuals, matter that much on the grand scheme of things, right? We are a living speck of dust in a cold process of evolution, hoping to pass on our genes and then eventually die. And on top of that, life is pretty difficult. We are all going to face suffering and pain and loss and heartbreak. And those two things in combination are pretty difficult to get your head around. Becker then argued that we develop a sense of who we are as an individual, i.e. an ego, as a defense mechanism to avoid this truth. This idea that we don't really matter and that we have to deal with suffering anyway, right? We develop religious ideas of the afterlife. We try to pursue goals in the material world and we try to make something of ourselves, right? And all these ideas are well and good, but there is a definite risk involved. Because basically our ego drives to claim things and attach to things as mine, our achievements, our possessions, and who we think we are. But fundamentally, nothing in this life is truly ours. In fact, as Tyson Fury said it so eloquently, the only thing we truly own in this life is moments in time. Mm. And this means that the ego's appetite to own things and attach to things is never truly satisfied. The desire train may stop at various stations, but it never ceases to move. The goalposts always change and there are always bigger things to own or do. And this insatiable hunger to attach to a narrative of who we are never truly fulfills us to the core. We constantly, deep down, don't feel good enough because the demands of our ego are almost unlimited and we are just finite human beings. Alan Watts did this amazing speech that just lives rent free in my brain where he talked about the fact that the human condition is a constant fall to our death. He basically said when we're born, we're thrown off some kind of edge and we are hurling towards an inevitable end. But the interesting thing is that it isn't just you that is falling, right? Everything else in your life is falling too. Who you think you are, what you've achieved, what matters to you, what you've done in the past, it's all falling with you. You know, at times I get so attached to how I perform on the basketball court or what my grades at university are or how one video performs over another. And in these times, I have to constantly remind myself that everything is falling, everything is temporary, and that I have to let go and not hold on so tight. Now, if we go back to the monk that we met earlier, I asked him how I could specifically take in all of this wisdom and put it into practice in my daily life. How can I not become so attached to worldly things and not be driven by the desires 
of my ego. And he emphasized the importance of things like mindfulness, right, which is a key part of monk life. But he didn't just suggest that I sat and meditated for hours on end like him and his brethren do. Instead, he talked about the importance of remaining transparent to our disposition in life, i.e. not letting our judgment become clouded by the drives and the attachments of our ego. So I think from my learning in this area over the past sort of one to two weeks, I could synthesize what he meant by the reality of our disposition into like three points, right? And then me and you can go away from this video and learn and remind ourselves of these three points. The first is that anytime we feel a deep negative emotion in our life, it is probably because we have become attached. Attached to an outcome, attached to our appearance or our reputation, attached to our skills or attached to some kind of relationship. And you're always going to get attached in your life, right? Because it is a natural tendency of the human psyche. We are born predisposed to do that. But the important thing is when you recognize some disquiet in your mind, you can look for what the thing was that you got attached to and remind yourself that all you need to do is try and let go. Secondly, we have to remind ourselves of the truth that all we really own in this life are moments in time. Nothing else is really ours. We have been given a finite amount of time to use in whichever way we like, right? And if time is going to pass anyway, why shouldn't we try and have the most positive experiences we can and have the most positive effect on people that we can, right? Through love, beauty, connection, self-growth. And finally, a little bit of insight from my mate, the monk, that I've been thinking about over the past two weeks, where he said to me that this life that we all experience is a gift, right? It's been given to us by the forces of the universe. You can call that God, you can call that nature, whatever, right? But the important thing to recognize is that you didn't choose to be here. You didn't choose to be given this life. It was a gift given to you by forces and powers outside of your control. And therefore, everything that you achieve, all of the skills and the competence that you acquire is just a result of a gift that you were given by the universe. And the best approach to try and develop ourselves and pursue things out in the world is to not become attached to any outcome or any results and remember the crucial truth that all we do is just to give back to the powers that gave us this gift of life. So that is why we aren't who we think we are. And as Alan Watts once said, you don't know yourself and you never can. So let go of trying. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, there are similar themes across my content that you can start exploring with this video here. With that said, I will see you soon.